then um, just reach out to me. My email is nurserobin21 at gmail.com, and that is Robin with the Y, and I will help you with any of your questions. So when we start talking about hormones, we, you know, there's a lot of information out there. And yes or yes. <laughs> and I think a lot of times when it comes to hormones, we're hearing so many different things from so many different people that what ends up happening is we just, we don't do anything. Uh, because there's just so much information out there on hormones that we just decide, well, forget it. I'm just not going to do anything. And I'm, my goal today is to walk through, well, what are hormones? Like, what are we talking about here? Specifically, we're going to target uh, the, the thyroid. We're going to be talking about digestion. We're going to be talking about all hormones in the body. And then um, we're also going to be giving you not only, you know, the, the, the re resolutions or solutions for whatever's going on with your hormones, but the underlying causes, because it gets down to that. It comes down to if you are not addressing the underlying cause of what's causing your imbalances in your body, then you're going to still be continuing to search for that next magic pill or that ma magic oil or that magic whatever. Um, you have to get to the underlying cause. And my, my goal is to make this simple for you guys, to give you real life things that you can start applying tomorrow and get the results that you're looking for. So we will just get started here. And when, of course, whenever I'm doing a talk, I always have to put that disclaimer out there. Um, I am a nurse, I am not a doctor, therefore anything that you hear tonight, it is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, prevent any disease. Any information is for educational purposes only. I encourage you guys to be your advocate of your own health and do the research that you need to make the best decision for yourself. So um, if you start, start popping on and you're not muted, go ahead and mute your line. I will mute it on my end, but for some reason, sometimes it just uh, unmutes itself. So go ahead and do that, and I appreciate that. So there's the disclaimer. So let's talk about hormones for a minute and, and talk about exactly what they are, because most of us think of hormones as you know, estrogen, progesterone. And we also think, well, hormones are only, um, you know, for women or hormones are only, only affected by people in their, you know, fifties and sixties or even the late forties. But the reality is, is hormones are an issue for everybody, even infants, not even an issue. They're a normal functioning part of our system that, that we need to have in balance for all of our organ systems to, to do what they were created to do. So hormones are simply chemical messengers. They're messengers that control most major bodily, bodily functions and from simple basic needs like hunger to complex systems like reproduction and then even our emotions and mood. So before we get into all of this, I'm not gonna get into a whole chemistry class, I promise, but I do think it's really important for you guys to understand uh, you know, what, how, how hormones are produced in the body, like how this whole system works, and it's gonna make a heck of a lot more sense to you guys of why we're having the issues that we're having. So what you're seeing here is a hypothalamus. The hypothalamus sits right in the middle of the brain. And then on the other side of the screen, you're seeing pituitary gland. And that is the master gland that also sits in the brain. So we're gonna, just for the purpose of tonight, we're gonna, we're gonna name these guys, happy hypothalamus and Pete the pituitary. So what happens is there's a communication channel that goes on. And what happens is it's a three-step hormone production uh, a communication. And the first step, it starts in the brain. And again, you're, it starts with these two organs right here, happy the hypothalamus, who is responsible for those releasing factors. If you're thinking about thyroid specifically, thyroid stimulating hormone will make more sense because that's the job of the pituitary. The releasing factor, happy the hypothalamus, says, hey, I need more XYZ hormone. It sends a signal to Pete the pituitary and says, release these things. So Pete is the master gland, he'll turn the gates open or not, and Pete will say, okay, got it, got the message, he'll open the gates, and then he produces a stimulating hormone to get our organs to actually stimulate and produce those. So that's where the message comes from, 
for example, if we're talking about the thyroid, that Pete the pituitary sends a stimulating factor because Happy the hypothalamus told him to, to the thyroid to produce that thyroid stimulating hormone. So then that's how our hormones for our thyroid work. So again, when we're looking at this communication channel, it's very critical that you understand that if one area of the body is not working or those lines of communication are messed up, it's going to screw up the entire line. You remember the old game you used to play with the telephone and you know, you'd sit in a circle and you'd start with one word and then you get to the other and the whole, it was completely different. That's exactly what happens when we have hormone dysfunction. So Pete sends the factors. Once the stimulating factors are released, they go down to the organs that are needing the help and where, they, where they're, they're needed and where those hormones are produced. So estrogen, as an example, the hypothalamus says, hey, we need estrogen. Pituitary sends the stimulating factor to the ovaries and then the ovaries release estrogen. And then, you know, that's for every single system in the organs, hormone system in the body. Then after the organ does its job, then the last step is the shutoff. The body has to turn those organs off and turn that system off. Otherwise, you keep producing that hormone. So again, when somebody's TSH is way too high, right, that communication has not been turned off. Like, dude, we don't need any more TSH. Like, shut it down. But then the thyroid continues to, the, the TSH continues to go high, and then it screws up the entire communication channel. So again, it's not just about taking a drug or a pill to make that TSH come down and get it to stop, you know, being produced. We have to get to why is the systems messed up? Like, why don't they communicate? Because otherwise, what's going to happen? You're going to have to manage your hormone problem for the rest of your life. And that's that's traditional medicine. That's what they do, right? You go to the doctor. They're not like, oh, you've got thyroid disease. So um, yeah, let's figure out how we can like get rid of this. No, that is not what they do. They figure out what drug dose you can put be put on to manage your disease process for the rest of your life. That for me as a nurse, um, I'm, I'm not okay with that. Like that's, that's not okay. We have to get to why, what's causing it. Like, why can't we fix these things? But that's just not the traditional sense. And hey, it's not, you know, I'm not beating the medical system up. It's, that's just the way it is, right? They, they, that's, that's the system. They find a diagnosis, they treat it with the drug surgery or whatever. And then that's the system. So if you want a different result than what everybody else is getting out there, then you have to look at different solutions. And again, that makes, makes it so important that you have to be an advocate for your own health. So that is how the body produces the hormones. Again, we talked about that step two, you know, where, where the hypothalamus is communicating with all of the other hormone glands, organs, telling it to do whatever it needs to do. And then, it'll, then that, that organ system will say, hey, I've got enough hypothalamus. The happy hypothalamus says, hey, I'm happy. You guys can just shut it down. Pete stops working. And then we've got that negative feedback. That's that shut off. And the problem is, is this doesn't happen. This becomes so confused. And I will talk about why that happens as well. So you may or may not have heard of the gut brain connection. And in order to have a, a healthy brain and a healthy nervous system and a health, healthy hypothalamus, you have to have all of these areas all in balance. And the gut, I can't even, not even stress, you know, how important keeping our gut health is so important uh, because again, the hormones are created in the gut. 20% of our, our thyroid hormones are created in the gut. Serotonin, our feel-good hormone, the hormone that makes us not depressed, it's mostly created in the gut lining. So you cannot have gut imbalance or, or hormone imbalance without each of them affecting themselves. So that is the gut-brain connection. They do call the gut our second brain or our second nervous system for that reason. And we see a lot of children with autism over the years and in our office, and I can tell you, when we fix their gut, their brain start work, starts working better. They start communicating because the frontal lobe of their brain is functioning better. 
fix the gut, the body heals, and also with that nervous system. My husband's a chiropractor, as many of you might know, and this is another core foundation. The brain controls all healing and function, right? We know this, that if we cut the spinal cord, what happens? We're dead. You know, nothing's going to function. None of our organs, our heart's going to stop beating. And so that communication from the brain down through the spinal cord, those nerves coming from the spinal cord go to every single organ of the body. So if we have interference from that brain through the spinal cord, from the nerves down through the gut, and if those are messed up, then right there, that alone is going to screw up this entire pathway. So when we're looking for the underlying causes, we are looking for five different areas. Those five areas are stress, our mind. The next one is our nervous system. How balanced does our spine look? Do we have subluxation? We've got to get to those underlying causes. We look at nutritional deficiencies and what our diet looks like. We look at toxicities. We also look at how are we exercising? Our human growth hormone is stimulated by exercise. So there's not one answer. And while that might seem a little bit overwhelming to you, just know that if you just go, okay, I've got a hormone issue. I need to look at five areas of my body. I need to look at my stress levels. I need to look at my nervous system. I need to look at my diet and nutrition. I need to look at the toxins in my life, and I need to look at exercise. And those are the five steps that are going to get you well by addressing each one of those and getting to the underlying cause. So again, as we go through this, you're probably like, crap, where's my paper and pencil? <laughs> because I'm going to be, again, giving you a fire hose of information. Just know that this is recorded and you guys can go back and take notes. But yes, if you can get up and get a pen or a piece of paper, I would highly suggest that. And I probably should have mentioned that at the beginning. So let's talk about hormones before we get into the solutions and the causes. Let's talk about hormones effect and how there's six ways that hormones affect our digestion. And for some of you, this might really blow you away. So number one, if you have a low progesterone, this causes constipation. If you have DHEA, DHEA um, it, it imbalances, that's a hormone that's really responsible for creating our testosterone levels in our body and supporting the adrenals. This speeds up our GI lining repair. So hello, leaky gut. You know, if we have leaky gut going on, we've got a DHEA, probably an imbalance in that hormone. Melatonin, that is created in the pineal gland, part of that that structure, that the communication pathway that we just showed you, that regulates stomach acid. Birth control pills, by the way, this thickens bile and it causes gall, black, gall stones. So how many people do you know, and then this is hormone related, and how hormones can affect our gallbladder and can affect our liver. How many people do you know that had a baby and within the first six months, they had major gallbladder problems and they had to get their gallbladder taken out. I know for a fact my sister had this happen when I, my nephew was just a couple months old. It's because the hormone pathways were so out of balance that they caused these stresses to the other areas. So there's not one area in the body that is not affected by our hormones. And while having a baby, it's very natural to our, for our hormones to be out of balance, but it should not cause our other areas dysfunction. And if that happens, that is a huge red flag that something has been going on for quite a while and needs to be addressed. So number five, non-beneficial bacteria, so bad bacteria in the gut, it, it, it prevents excess estrogen or good bacteria, non-beneficial bacteria, in the gut prevent excess estrogen from leaving the body. So good bacteria allows the bad estrogen to leave. Bad bacteria does not allow the bad estrogen to leave. Well, why do we care about estrogen? Why do we care that estrogen needs to leave the body? Well, bad estrogen causes cancer. Bad estrogen causes all of our hormonal cancers. And it also can cause prostate problems as well and prostate cancer. So we need good bacteria in our digestive system to help get rid of the bad estrogen in our body. And we'll talk about, well, how does our body create bad estrogen? And we'll talk about that in a second. Number six 
is elevated progesterone. It increases candida growth in the gut. So again, candida is yeast or candida. Many times this goes completely undiagnosed. People don't even have, don't even know they have it, but I encourage you, we're not gonna get into all of that, but I encourage you just to Google candida symptoms. And I would say 90% of the population has those symptoms. So you can see now how important it is that we keep our digestive system balanced and at the same time, our hormone system balanced because you cannot affect one without the other. So just look at the statistics that are out there. Is it a coincidence that studies show 80% of women suffer from hormonal imbalance in their lifetime? No. Or that one in four men over 30 has low testosterone? No, it's not. If you look at the number one cancers out there right now um, in research, it's all breast cancer, prostate cancer, thyroid cancer, ovarian cancer, cervical cancer. These are all hormone cancers. And this is the problem that is, is, is hormones imbalance are causing major, major disease processes that we are forgetting how we can get these balanced by just addressing these hormones and fixing the gut. And of course, like I said, addressing that nervous system, which is key. So what is causing all of this? Well, here's the culprits. Here's the underlying cause. It comes down to toxins. And if you know me, you've, if you've listened to me for over the years, you know I am all about you know, removing toxins from our life. Just another reason why we've got to clean up our life. And I'm not talking about being perfect, and God knows I am not perfect, but we should be able to 80 to 90% of the time keep those toxic chemicals out so that our bodies can function the way that they were created. So those culprits come from poor diet, the standard American diet, or what we call the SAD diet, a toxic liver or colon, dormant infections that have gone unnoticed like H. pylori or SIBO or something like that, um, toxic chemicals, beauty products that have toxic chemicals in them. Uh, the average woman puts on 300 different chemicals before she even walks out the door in the morning, before even breakfast, she's probably got 80 chemicals just from her makeup, her shampoo, lotion, and toothpaste. So again, it's, if you think about your body as a bucket or a pond, anytime we come across these toxic chemicals, our body fills up. And if we don't have our digestive system in track, or our liver imbalance, or all of these things, then our body cannot get rid of these toxic chemicals, and our nervous system as well. So the other thing too is even if you have a great normal functioning body and your nervous system is clear and everything is perfect, if you have more toxins in your body that it has to deal with, that your immune system has to focus on to get out, then it's gonna, it's gonna keep filling up. You know, your immune system can only do so much. We all have cancer cells. And so you know, the immune system is trying to kill cancer cells, is trying to get the toxins out of our life, is trying to get the viruses and bacteria that's coming across up. So whenever we can at least do our part to help our systems out, by choosing the right things to put in or on our body, our body's gonna work better. So uh, the acidity of your body, again, toxins cause our body to be acidic, chlorinated water or toxic water, caffeine, and there, our genetics do play a role, but the whole study of the epigenetics is saying that even if you have the gene for breast cancer, so say you have BRAC1, BRAC2 gene, it does not mean that you're doomed. It just means, and, and Dr. Gupta did a study on this, it just means, and what he said was with the study of epigenetics is that our genes load the gun, but it is our environment that pulls the trigger. So what that means is I have a loaded gun sitting here on the desk. So those, AKA your genes, your bad genes. If I have a loaded gun just sitting here on the desk and I don't pull the trigger, is it gonna hurt anybody? No, it's not gonna hurt anybody. But if I pull it up and I trigger it, well then yeah, somebody could potentially get hurt. And that's the analogy of getting the toxins are the trigger to our genes. So if you do have that genetic makeup or the MTHFR gene, then you better make sure that you are doing everything that you can in your life to keep these toxic chemicals out. Because again, the toxic chemicals and these stressors are what's gonna pull that trigger. 
So let's talk about the thyroid here um, a little bit. And just to understand, because, and this is why I just wanna take a second on this, is because 20 million Americans now have thyroid problems. I have seen children in our office coming in with thyroid problems, and you, you have to understand how important the thyroid is for every function of the body. It affects the heart, it affects the gut, it affects our cognition and our brain. And these are some factors that you're seeing here that um, can cause this dysfunction. So we absolutely need our thyroid to be in balance. So even our you know, nutrition, zinc, selenium, iron, all of these things need to be at that right level in order for our, for our thyroid to function. Iodine, iodine is so critical for our thyroid health. Now, if I don't know, you know what, what era you're from, but if you know, if you remember the, like the Chernobyl or the explosions that happened, any of those um, radiation explosions that have happened, and what the community does is their government actually started passing around iodine tablets. Why do they pass around iodine tablets? Because they know that that toxic radiation, those toxic chemicals, that are neurotoxin will attack the thyroid. And iodine will be the, will help to support and protect the thyroid. And I can't tell you how many people are running around with simple iodine deficiencies that's making them more susceptible for thyroid dysfunction. Here's a real simple test to determine if you have an iodine deficiency. Let me grab this so you guys can see this. Um, so I can show you how to do this. So you remember the iodine here, and let me just pull on my video because I didn't want to distract anybody by, by um, putting on these. I, I just really wanted you guys to pay attention to the screens because there's a lot of information here. But if you remember this here, this is the iodine tinctures. It is, um, you can get it at Walgreens, CVS, anything like this. Very simple. All you do is you open this up, right, and you take this, and then you're gonna take your forearm, if you can see that, you're gonna take your forearm and you're going to paint a square on the inner part of your forearm. See, stain it, stain that, all right? If you, and you can research this and Google it, there's tons of YouTubes on that. If you have the iodine disappear within 12 hours, you are severely deficient in iodine. And again, if it's gone within six hours, holy cow, you're, you're really deficient. And we'll talk about where we can get our iodine source, kelp, greens, all of those things as well. But iodine is so important for our thyroid function, and many times this is never checked. Nobody checks this. The other thing that is really important is our vitamin D level. So vitamin D is critical for our hormone at all of our hormones. In fact, vitamin D actually acts like a hormone in our body. So again, the thyroid, it converts iodine into our T3, T4. So again, our T3, T4, if we're looking at those lab values and we're not having that conversion, you know, we're, look, look at your iodine level. So iodine uh, converts, the converts iodine into T3, T4, and vitamin D is so critical. Vitamin D helps iodine to convert to T3, T4. So if your doctor doesn't check your vitamin D levels, you need to at least go to directlabs.com and you can order your own labs. You can go to Anytime Labs. Um, there's lots of things, again, that you can take this responsibility onto yourself. Of course, I'm not telling you to diagnose or treat yourself. See a healthcare pro professional that can walk you through this. But you need to be checking your vitamin D levels, not only for this hormone pathway, because the research shows that you could have you know, increased risk for diabetes, heart disease, and breast cancer. When you're looking at your vitamin D levels, the ideal level, if you look at a reference range, the reference range is about 32 to 100. Where the research shows is preventatively, we need our vitamin D levels to be between the, the levels of 50, I would even say 60, and 80. We want it on that higher end. So if you want more information on vitamin D levels, go to the vitamin council, no, vitamindcouncil.org. Vitamindcouncil.org, tons of research on there. But again, get your vitamin D levels checked. If you're not checking them, you know, I take 5,000 international units every single day. You've got, it starts with that, and then look at your iodine levels, and of course, everything else that we've been talking about with the gut, the nervous system, toxic chemicals out of your life, 
all of those. But because of the, the 20 million Americans having thyroid issues, and even my sister, who is a, another sister, not the one that had the gallbladder out, um, and the other sister had a gorder on her thyroid, and she was diagnosed with Graves' disease. And so she came to me, and she's like, oh my gosh, they want to radiate my thyroid, and you know they want to um, just kill it with radiation. And I'm like, heck no. I probably said something worse than that, but I said, heck no. Um, we got, no, Ronnie, I can tell you what this is coming from. She's a hairdresser. She was a cosmetologist for 20 years. She has been around toxic chemicals her whole life. You know, being a smoker, all of these chemicals, her bucket is full. And so she did not go through that treatment. We decided to look at her nutrition. We did some advanced testing. We looked at her vitamin D levels. We looked at her toxicity levels, which were off the charts. We did detox. We got her on supplements. We fixed her gut, which is still always a challenge for people with thyroid dysfunction. You always have to support your gut. It's never going to go away. It's you know something that's going to have to always be addressed. But we did these things. She avoided surgery. She avoided killing her thyroid. And she's functioning just fine. And thank God, because of that, now she has gone into natural medicine herself. And she is a Reiki master. She does all kinds of natural healing. And she has shared the gift of what she experienced through her experience of healing with other people. And so that's just the awesome thing and why I keep doing what I do is because if I affect one person, if I share our stories that when you take and start looking at the underlying cause, you can get change, you can heal, you're going to share your story, your healing story with somebody else and we can start shifting these statistics because the statistics are really, really scary out there. Okay, I know I'm like talking so fast because I'm like so out of breath. Sorry, I get on a soapbox with all these things and I get fired up. All right, so let's talk about how essential oils can help in this situation and specifically what products and what essential oils we can incorporate to support our body while, of course, eliminating those underlying causes. Essential oils are the lifeblood of the plants. They're mother's nature. They're the immune system of the plant. They are so volatile and so amazing that their molecular structure is almost identical to ours. And so if a plant gets a disease or it gets injured or anything, it's the essential oils in that plant or the root or seed or whatever that shows up to help the situation, to help heal that situation. And so with essential oils, their chemistry is a lot like ours. And so they recognize us as themselves. And so literally we can think about essential oils as food to our body, as nutrients to our body. They are super cost effective. They're fat soluble, meaning they get inside the cell, they can cross that blood brain barrier, get into those hormone pathways, and they are fast and they work so effectively. So again, when I'm researching all of this, I wanted to make sure I have the best. I know that you guys know I love Young Living Essential Oils. They're the only company that I will choose for my family because of their seed to seal promise. If you wanna know more about their seed to seal promise, you can visit seedtoseal.com and learn about how they distill, how they are, um, you know, they are, stewards of the land. They are doing farming at, at respective, respective ways, not like some other companies out there. Um, so again, I, I've chose Young Living for my family. So we use essential oils in three different ways. We can inhale them or we can put them in a diffuser. When we inhale them, you know that whole hormone pathway that we just walked through? It affects that hormone pathway immediately. It starts communicating with the hypothalamus, communicating with the pineal gland, communicating with our thyroid and our nervous system, and it affects and starts doing what it needs to do. Many of the essential oils are what we call adaptogenic. So when you are breathing an essential oil, it will do what your body needs it to do. That's how brilliant essential oils are. Diffusing five to 10 drops in a cold air diffuser is awesome. Putting them on topically, one or two drops on location, using them as a dietary supplement, again, please only be using Young Living for your dietary supplements. They're the only company that out there with a grass certified rating for internal consumption for dietary use. So please don't run out to Walmart or TJ Maxx and get something that's poison because those are all mostly toxic chemicals and you're gonna do more harm than good. 
All right, so let's talk about the seven key areas that left, in, if these are left in hormonal disarray, we will leave feeling like a hot mess. So how many of you have felt like this sometime in your life? I know I have too, and I have to keep readdressing these seven areas. So let's look at how essential oils and some support products can help. And we call this targeted nutrition. So if anybody was on my essential oils 101 class before, that's the very basics. And now we're gonna get into some details and some specifics of targeted nutrition for our hormone pathways. So H, let's go through this. This is number one. H is, is for hunger. So 100%, so surveys, surveys estimate that almost 100% of young women and 70% of young men had food cravings during the past year. I mean, come on, that's no surprise, right? We've been all craving that, but there's real science behind it that we have these cravings because of our hormone balances, because of our stress levels, that we are craving sugar. And when we crave sugar and we crave bad fats, then it's going to cause those hormone pathways to become even more imbalanced. So it's a vicious cycle that happens. So the brains produce less of our stress-related hormones, meaning our, you know, when we have these things in our diet, it's going to produce less of the good stuff and more of the bad stuff, and it's going to throw our hormones out of balance. So bad fats like hydrogenated oils, partially hydrogenated oils, look at your labels, get canola out of your life. That is nothing but causes inflammation, and you want to get that out. You want good, healthy fats like avocados, raw nuts and seeds, cook with coconut oil, grapeseed oil, all of that. We need good healthy fats for our hormone pathways to function and get rid of sugar. So defending against our hunger hormones, there's awesome products that we can grab. And this is where some of you might want to grab that notepad. <laughs> so when we talk about our hormones, leptin is the hormone that tells our body to burn fat for energy. Some people have leptin resistance where our bodies are so inflamed those receptor sites are so inflamed that our body doesn't even hear that leptin's there and leptin continues to rise but it doesn't get inside the cell and therefore no fat is burned so we call this the weight loss resistance the the ghrelin hormone that is our hormone that tells us when we're hungry that causes that imbalance that we're hungry all the time it says eat 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 and we, and we're really not, we, we, our bodies really don't need to eat, but it's that hormone pathway that throws us off. And then we go, oh my gosh, I'm starving to death. My body thinks I'm starving to death and it will start craving these sugars. So things to help doing that are balancing your blood sugar. Ningxia Red is awesome for that. Two ounces a day. It's full body support. Every hormone pathway is supported by that. Two ounces a day is equal to the antioxidant level of 10 pounds of spinach. This is in my entire family's life. We line up in the morning. We do our shot glasses of Ningxia Red before anybody walks out the door. And if I'm going throughout the day and I need that extra boost, then I'm doing another, another packet of Ningxia Red as well. Grapefruit essential oil increases leptin levels, and it increases leptin levels, but it also increases the the absorption of our leptin levels. Because remember when I was saying that leptin resistance the body's so inflamed that the hormone doesn't get into the cell and the body doesn't even see that leptin's there. Well, adding grapefruit essential oil into your Ningxia Red, into veggie capsules, again, we're talking the Vitality line, which you can take these internally, adding a couple drops throughout the day in your water is going to help your body to increase that metabolism. So the right kind of carbs too. Again, when we're talking carbs, we're getting rid of all those you guys know, I mean, we all know what we shouldn't be eating and what we should be eating, right? Eating those healthy carbs, doing shakes, and then sleep. The more that we get sleep, the less we start craving sugar. So lavender essential oil is perfect for that. And this is obvious. I don't need to go into a nutrition class. Eat more of this, not that. <laughs> you know, those are all toxic chemicals over there on the right-hand side, and we just need to eliminate them if not just you know, um, keep them to a minimum. Again, I'm not perfect. I'll, I, like, I like a good beef sandwich during a football game and you know those types of things too, but I like to keep it in balance. It's all about the balance. So if 80 to 90% of the time you're doing what you need to do, then the other percent of the time your body can handle that. Um, again, 
try to make the best choices you can as well. Um, so we have to defend and help support our digestive system. That's where we need digestive enzymes. If somebody does not have a gallbladder, you need to be on digestive enzymes for the rest of your life with every single meal because you're not breaking down the bad fats or even any fats and carbohydrates like you used to and you can put more stress on the digestive system. Probiotics, the Life 9, taking one of those every single day gives you 17 billion organisms for support. Thyromin, again, if you are one that has a lot of thyroid issues or you have a low iodine level, look into thyromin, do your research on that, it's specific for that. It not only has support in there for the, the iodine, but it has pituitary support, and it also has pineal gland support. And then, of course, our Digize. Our Digize is a blend of essential oils that one or two drops every single day. If you have chronic digestive issues, it's really going to help support the body. You can take that internally. You can apply that topically right to the abdomen. This is not one that I would diffuse. This one does not smell very good, so I wouldn't want my whole house smelling like Digize, but you know, I mean, maybe you would. You just have to try it out for yourselves, but I like that one internally. That's my favorite way to take that. So O is for oh no libido, right? So this is another common thing that I see is that when people come in our office, number one thing is no sex drive. And the research shows that that's, you know, that that's pretty common. 43% of women and 31% of men have experienced sexual dysfunction. And one of the most common problems is low libido or like low sex drive. Subjects showed an immune response that was at least 33% higher in people who had sex two times a week versus those having no sex and those with extremely high activity according to researchers at Wilkes University in Pennsylvania. And I think we all understand that having that urge or that libido is really important for our health. So what kind of products can we do to help support that? Again, reiterating getting to that underlying causes of what's causing that dysfunction. So to increase your sex drive with estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone support, Endoflex. Endoflex is a specific essential oil that is a blend that supports our, our adrenals, it supports our thyroid, it supports our entire, endo, our entire endocrine system. You can use Sensation Massage Oil. It has a blend of essential oils in there as well that helps so, you know, when you're in the mood, this, or if you feel like you want to get in the mood, grab the sensation uh, essential oil also that comes in essential oil and the massage oil. And if you're really low on libido, start using this as your lotion every day. If you get out of the shower, just start using this. If you've got really, really dry skin and you know that it's hormone related, get some sen sensation essential oil and that's also going to help support your hormones. Power dyes. Oh my gosh, so Powergize is typically known as the male, the male support. It helps with the adrenals, it helps with supporting that testosterone, but females can take this as well. well look into these ingredients that has DHEA in there to help support those adrenals. I know my husband loves this. It helps with cognitive function for males, and it really, really helps boost that testosterone support. So real men use oils. We just talked about some of that. So when we look at different oils, Shutron. Shutron is another replacement for your cologne. So again, getting rid of anything that has the word fragrance in there. Shutron smells good. It feels amazing on. I love the smell. My husband uses this as a cologne. Valor. Valor gives you a boost of confidence. So for men, sometimes they need to feel that confidence. And sometimes if their testosterone is low, they can start getting into depression and all kinds of things, and they need that extra boost. So Valor's for that. Prostate health, any imbalance or needing support for prostate health, this product is amazing. Uh, look into the ingredients of that. We don't have time to go through all the ingredients in there, but just know that Young Living has an amazing prostate health support. And then Goldenrod. Goldenrod is very specific for male support. You can use this anytime and pretty much anywhere, if you know what I mean. And this does help revving up that engine. So look at that for some amazing support for men. 
So ladies, <laughs> hey, and men are having this too. If this scene sounds familiar to you, um, uh, I know I've recently been experiencing some of that and I got that in check right away because I saw my mom suffering with all of these types of symptoms and I was like, heck no, this is not happening to me. So that's why I love Young Living Supports that supported me right away. But over 50% of women will experience hot flashes before, during, or after menopause. And recent studies have concluded that hot flashes can last for as little as a year and up to 12 years. Heck no. No thank you. I don't want to be dealing with hot flashes for 12 years. Are you kidding me? And nearly 40% of men over 45 experience beginning uh, the andropausal. So that's the manopause that we talk about. The process of losing testosterone can start as early as 20 years old. So for men, you know, if they start gaining a lot of weight, if they start gaining a lot of belly fat, they're stressed out. Their testosterone can, can go low as well. And then we start having this response that we're heating up. So things to help in this situation, extinguish the flame. Hormones in the hypothalamus is all about supporting that. Again, using Endoflex every single day as a part of your hormone support is awesome. Peppermint, one or two drops of peppermint on the bottoms of your feet or the back of your neck can cool you down quickly. And then I encourage you to look at Progestance Plus. Now this is not for males, this is only for females. It's really not a essential oil. It does have essential oils in it, but it's more of a serum. It has natural progesterone coming from the wild yam, and it's amazing to help support healthy progesterone levels. So get into balance with that product. That's so awesome. And actually, it smells so good. A lot of times, women, if they're dealing with PMS, they'll use it uh, periodically. And then if some women are having more issues where they really need to support that progesterone level, they'll use that on a daily basis. So cedar wood is another one of my favorites. It supports the limbic system. If you are having like really bad brain fog, one little trick that you can do that I learned in one of my aromatherapy courses is take one or two drops in the palm of your hand, rub your thumb into the cedar wood, put your thumb inside your mouth and hold it to the roof of your mouth for about a minute to two minutes. What that does is that gets directly to the pineal gland that accesses right to that limbic system. And that can work immediately to help support those hormone systems. Just another trick. But I love cedar wood for calming, for stress relief. It's just awesome. M is for moody. I, I'm not moody. I don't know about you guys. I don't have a problem with this. <laughs> but no, it's a real problem for a lot of people. And around the world, one out of 10 Americans are prescribed some for, form of mood-altering drugs. Isn't that crazy? One out of 10 Americans are prescribed a mood-altering drugs because of all of these things we just talked about. And the base chemical, so Prozac is one of the top, the base chemical that Prozac is manufactured from is fluoride, you guys. Fluoride is a toxic, neurotoxic chemical that affects our hormone pathways. So you shouldn't be using this in your toothpaste. You should be getting fluoride out of your life. Uh, do your research on that. I know it's a little bit controversial, but look into that and get fluoride out of your life. And certainly our drugs are not the answer. This chemical is known to kill the pineal gland and is known to cause many other body malfunctions. So for the mood, let's talk about my four favorite products for mood. Dragon Time, perfect for teenagers, teenage females that are needing some calming down, even just you know starting around 11 years old sometimes. Um, and even for yourselves, Dragon Time can come up really effective, and men as well. But it, it does just that. It calms the dragon in us. Femigen, if you really need that advanced support and you're over the age of like 35, look at Femigen as a, as a supplement. It has black cohosh in there, some other really great supports for during and uh, pre-menopause. And joy, everyone needs a little joy in their life. Joy brings love to the heart. One or two drops on the right over the heart, diffuse it to bring your mood out. If you're having feelings of you know occasional uh, blues and all of that, joy is going to be your go-to for that. Nutmeg helps to support the adrenals. So if you have chronic fatigue syndrome, we know that your adrenals are probably affected and start incorporating a little bit of nutmeg in your life. E is for exhausted. 
So coffee, the average American consumes three cups of coffee per day, the equivalent of 285 milligrams of caffeine. The coffee cortisol connection is real, meaning the more caffeine from coffee and all these different, the bad caffeine in our life is going to throw off our cortisol levels. Cortisol is the, the hormone that causes weight gain around our waist, and it causes, uh, that's our stress hormone. Cortisol, it ages us very, very quickly. So if we have more caffeine in our life, we're going to age quicker and we're going to gain weight just by having more coffee. People who get less than six hours of sleep at night have a rise in that ghrelin levels, right? They eat more and they retain more body fat. So what are we doing for these situations? We want to wake up, we want to perk ourselves up, um, and we want to support our adrenals, and we want to support our cortisol and our energy levels naturally. So Ningxia Nitro, it's like a natural five-hour energy. It has a healthy support in there to really help boost that cognitive function. Our B vitamins are also awesome. And again, as I'm going through these guys, um, you know, you're, obviously I'm not telling you to, to use all of these, just pick an area that you want to focus on. And if you're needing more energy in your life and you're needing more support with that, choose one or two products. Use it for at least two months before you know if it's going to make a difference. Okay. You need that at least two or three months. B vitamins. I can tell you that these are a part of my life. They're a part of my daughter's life. And I cannot function without my super bees. They have amazing supports in there Two, I take two a day. And if I don't, and I, I can really feel the difference. And that's pr partly how you know if you're taking a product that's going to work. Go off of it for a few days. Go off of it for a week to see if you notice any different. Cortistop is really um, a, a popular one to help reduce the cortisol levels. Many women will go on this for an extra little boost in metabolism, and it's really to keep that stress response down. So if you're somebody that's very high stressed, and you know that that middle section of your, your abdomen is, you're, you're gaining weight because of your stress levels, start incorporating Cortistop into your daily supplement routine. And then energy, essential oil, um, this is awesome, and it has a blend specifically to give us to boost that energy, so it's another one of my all-time favorites. S is for saggy skin, so it's, again, it's about avoiding all of these, horm these uh, chemicals that can cause hormone dysfunction, and when we start to eliminate these things, when we remove toxic chemicals, then our skin starts to appear better. When we give the body what it needs, sometimes when people go on a juice fast, you know, I don't know if you've ever done that, and nine times out of 10, people will tell me, wow, your skin looks amazing, because I've gotten all of the chemicals out, I've done a juice fast, and you can really see that difference in your skin. So avoid anything that has sodium lauryl sulfate in it, um, sodium lauryl sulfate, sulfites, anything like that. It's very abrasive to the skin and it actually causes wrinkles. Free radicals are atoms or toxins are free radicals, a group of atoms with, a, with an uh, unpaired number of electrons and they can form when oxygen interacts with certain molecules. So free radicals are what causes the oxidative stress in our body. So we need more antioxidants to repair that damaging to get free radicals out of our body. So again, whatever you're putting on your skin, take a look at those ingredients. Make sure that you're not doing more harm than good. This art line right here, those three, that's a toner, a facial cleanser, and a moisturizer. That's my routine that I use every day. Ningxia Red fights our free radicals. Again, two ounces is all you need for good support. Frankincense, that's our oil, wrinkles be gone. You know, frankincense helps support our healthy skin. So on a clean face, you just take one or two drops of frankincense, put it where you need that extra support, and then you can follow with your other routines. And then Agilis. So a lot of times when people have a hormone imbalance and toxins in their life, in their, in their body, they have a lot of joint pain or connective tissue issues. Um, so, and, and in our skin too, our skin can lose that collagen. So we've heard all the benefits of bone broth and collagen one and collagen two powder. Well, this is what Agilis is. And Agilis has both collagen one and collagen two. And so yes, it can help with somebody that has chronic uh, joint and connective muscle issues, but also it can help with our skin and uh, the way that our skin appears as well. So it's just an awesome little, um, side effect of that, that supplement. 
And so for sleep, sleep is, you know, it is a struggle for me still, you know, I, it is, I, I, my brain just doesn't shut off. I'm just go, go, go. And I thank God for my oils and my supplements um, because I don't, I, I don't know where I'd be without them because I do have to just calm down my drive and calm down my brain sometimes. And humans can go approximately 264 hours or 11 days without sleep before the body actually starts to die. I know that's like, okay, that's a fun statistic, but you can go 11 days. And I, I think sometimes I probably challenge myself on that, but it is a global crisis and many accidents occur when people are sleep deprived. And also our body heals when we sleep. So we have to figure out how we can get to sleep. And so some of those accidents that are pretty infamous are the Exxon Valdez disaster, the Chernobyl nuclear accident, Falling asleep while driving is responsible for at least 100,000 crashes, 40,000 injuries, and 1,550 deaths per year. So we've got to figure out how we can get our sleep cycles more balanced. And it is. If our hormones are out of balance, then our sleep cycles are going to be out of balance. Soak up some more sun. We just talked about how important that vitamin D level is. Like I said, I take a vitamin D, 5,000 international units a day. Um, omega gyes, which is a good healthy fat, it's an omega that Young Living has. It does have a thousand international use, units of vitamin D in there, but I do take a separate vitamin D when you are shopping for your vitamin D. D3, not the D2, the synthetic garbage that doesn't absorb and work. D3, and make sure that it does have K1 or K2 or a probiotic on that label. That's the only way that it's gonna really get in there and absorb. Get some rest, get some REMS with your lavender essential oil. I use Stress Away and lavender in my diffuser almost every night. And sometimes I use lavender and eucalyptus, but lavender's always in there for to support my sleep. Again, supporting all of your hormone pathways by using Endoflex on a daily basis, and then calming the brain and the nervous system with our blend stress away. So we just went through all of this. And if you were following along and you figured out what we were spelling, it was hot mess express, <laughs> hot mess. And so to get rid of our hot mess, we need to focus on that hunk, controlling our hunger, um, get, getting our libido supported, controlling on how we can support our, our temperatures, our moods, supporting exhaustion, helping our skin support and getting to sleep. So as we conclude here, most of you are already Young Living members. If you are not a Young Living member, then I will welcome you to our team. We do tons of education like this. We have a closed Facebook group that we have lots of activity going on at all times. Uh, and we would be glad to help support you on your journey to help you walk through this. If you are a new member, and you're just not sure which areas of your body need that extra support, or even if you are an existing member and you're just not sure which areas of your body need support, please reach out to me, message me, text me, get a hold of me, put it in the chat box. I will send you a link to an online questionnaire that will take you through a series of questionnaires and it will at least help to guide. Is it, is it hormone? Is it sleep? Is it digestion? Is it my joints and connective tissue? It will help you to narrow down and target which areas you need to support. But just know as we walk through those five areas that we need to support in our life, we need to focus on our mind and our stress levels. We need to focus on our nervous system and making sure that that's always balanced. If you don't have a chiropractor in your life, please reach out to me. I will find one for you. Number three, nutrition and making sure we're eating the things that we need to and taking the supplements, the right things. Check your iodine levels. Check your vitamin D level. Number four, start swapping out anything that's chemical in your life, replacing it with non-toxic products. Young Living is a wellness company. They've got over 750 products. Just start making that swap. And then lastly, start incorporating exercise one great exercise to incorporate that's so powerful for our mind and our hormones is yoga. Start, get, start getting into meditation and yoga, and that can really help support. But any exercise more than you're doing today is going to help support you. If you're a brand new member, I send you a welcome gift with 
tons of resources. And uh, by the end of this tonight, we do have a special that ends tonight. If you are a, a new member and you order a premium starter kit, you're gonna get the essential oils that are everyday essential oils, a diffuser, some Ning Shred, a household cleaning non-toxic product, and you're going to be supported with all of those and you'll learn all of those details as we continue to educate you on how to use those oils in your life. But many of those oils we talked about tonight to just start incorporating. I will also gift that really fun little roller blend kit on the left there and I'm going to fill the roller blend kit. So many times we just give you the recipe and have you blend them yourselves. But what I'm finding is people are so busy that when I have gifted those in the past, they're like, oh yeah, where is that? I never did do those recipes. So please, you guys, I know how powerful these oils work. I wanna gift it to you and I will make them up for you. So that is the special that's running tonight. If you're watching this on a recording, just reach out to the person that invited you to the class to see what specials they have going on, and I'm sure that they can support you. If you are an existing member and you have already placed your order for the month, awesome, I'm so glad that you did, but if you saw some certain products that you might think, oh man, I wanna try that out, maybe I wanna get that. If you place a 100 PV order by the end of the month, that special roll-on kit is for you as well. And you don't have to keep them all for yourself, Christmas is coming up, you could split each one of those up and make an individual gift and re-gift the gift of health. I mean, that's an awesome gift. So again, those are the specials that are going on for tonight. I know we went through a ton of information. You guys are probably just exhausted from hearing me talk so fast, but this will be recorded and I'll share this on Facebook. And I'll also, if you message me and you need a recording, I will send you the recording when it's all up and loaded. But I thank you guys so much for um, staying on tonight. This is so important of this topic that I can't stress enough how appreciative I am of you guys being on this call. And um, that ends our class tonight. I thank you so much and have a good night.